Hello, hello, beautiful people. It's me again, the Metaverse Explorer. Thanks again for getting me over that 7,000 mark. I'm at 7,010. Uh, my aim is still to get to 10,000. So thank you very much. Let's get started. What's our topic for today? It is Community 3. They're a new project on Solana. They've just launched about uh, last January, uh, which is only a couple of months ago, like four months ago. Um, and they're kind of getting really popular. And there's been a lot of community sentiment for it. So I thought I would do a video for it. So let's get started. What did I find out? It's a small video they have. I like it. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. It kind of gives a small indication of what they're kind of doing. They're building, right? They're building. Uh, so first off, this is a disclaimer. Um, and nothing of this is financial advice, just my own opinion and education and from uh, finding information from public sources that I've been able to find. All right, let's get started. A bit of communi uh, community information about Community 3, uh, which is, you know, a, pun on, a play on the words of Community, which is Community 3. Awesome. Uh, so let's have a look at the general Discord statistics, right? They've got um, total members of 20,000, 21,000. They've got a whitelist for an NFT coming up, and that's nearly 2,000 people already. How much supply in the NFT? 5,000. So at least one -fifth of, uh, two, nearly two-fifths of the entire NFT is going to be whitelisted away. Um, I don't know how I feel about this because this is a very large amount. Um, and as you can see here, this is their uh, Twitter. Uh, basically, they joined in February 2022. They were already releasing something in January. Um, but basically, they say uh, they've got 5,000 mad scientists creating the formula for vibrant, engaged, and collaborative communities through technology. They do have a website. They've got a Twitter. They've got a Discord. So feel free to join them. Be one of their 14,000 followers and see what they're all about. So let's look at the team because usually I try to focus on the team um, because the team, you know, you, you gather around people. People gather around people. They don't gather around the software. Um, for prominent people is what really makes protocols and projects and, and, and teams. So we have uh, Brendan, we've got Andrew, Eric. Uh, so we've got the CEO, the CFO, the COO, a community lead, and a director of partnerships. Let's have a look at Andrew first and then Brian as well. So uh, he's the president and CRO of Opera Events. And then Brendan is the CEO for Opera Events. So this guy, these guys are called Community 3, but now there's all of a sudden Opera Events. What the hell is Opera Event, right? So um, Opera Event seems to be some kind of... Um, uh, management process where they come into your company and then they prepare you for their pre for your pre-IPO process so that they can get you ready, get you all your regulations ready so that you can go to market quickly. Let's read about the CEO and what his experience is. Uh, so he's a CEO and executive for startups in high growth sectors. Um, 20 years of experience, uh, specialized speciali specialities include IPO preparation, international expansion, uh, HR, recruiting, legal, and administrative management. Strong experience with digital media, video game verticals, uh, mobile, MCN for YouTube, esports, and virtual products. His job is to mainly prepare companies and their management teams for pre-IPO. So this is when it first initially goes public and everyone can buy in. Um, I create infrastructure, optimizing capital structures, and develop long-term strategies for exit. Long-term strategies for exit. Hmm. And you can see here, this is down at the, at the bottom of their websites. 2022 Opera Events Community 3. So these guys seem to be very heavily tied to the Community 3 movement. Um, so let's find out about uh, what Community 3 actually is or what they're trying to deliver for us, right? So they're trying to revolutionize the way. So all of this is taken from some of their light papers and some of their, um, their website as well. Um, so revolutionize the way organizations manage their communities in places such as Discord, YouTube, Twitter, podcasts, all of this sort of stuff. They do it in multiple ways. Gamification, the creation of tools and activating your community. Let's talk about gamification. They like to do the quest line, the badges, ranks, reward, currencies, all this sort of stuff. We've seen this before, right? It, it happens in, in communities that we do now. Like YGG is one of the biggest examples where they give you badges and all of this sort of stuff. The creation of tools to manage your community through workflows, self-onboarding, payments, verification, marketplaces, um, and activating your community to grow further through social media integration. Um, this is a bit of a hit and miss. Like what does that actually mean? Maybe some marketing jargon, mumbo jumbo, that sort of stuff. Um, What's interested, uh, so the first, second thing I do after I look at the team, I look at who their backers are, who are they actually affiliated with, and what products have they made, and who are they working with. So I found out they do have a $9 million um, uh, investment from different VCs, and they have built a functioning beta. I haven't been able to confirm this myself because I'm not, uh, I, don't, I don't need the use of their services, so I haven't been able to verify the actual product, right? 
So they've launched a Web3, uh, uh, cust- they've launched with Web3 customers uh, like Sandbox, um, which we see at the below, below here, Sandbox, Yield Guild Games. I really want to see what the co- uh, connection is between Yield Guild Games and Community 3. Big Time Studios, uh, we know Big Time Studios, um, so they're a new upcoming game, a lot of hype around them. And then Secret Network. This is something that really got me going. I'm a big fan of Secret Network and I use it myself. So I want to know what they've done in Secret Network and has it actually worked? That's what I really want to know. Um, let's have a look at um, what the NFTs they're going to be minting is. So uh, we've got two pictures over here. There's a skeleton and like a wizard. Um, basically, it's kind of like a little uh, um, 2D uh, room that you'll be, you have, and then you'll have different traits and characteristics inside the room. So you'll be able to mint the man scientist and be part of the journey to become the back-end software for all communities in Web3. As well as this, you'll be earning tokens in their IDO. And currently, the 5,000 5, mad scientists will be 10% in the IDO. So you, you, you figure that out. How much do you think the company might be worth? And then how much is 10% worth? And then individually, how much is those 5,000 5, NFTs going to be worth? So just do some normal extrapolation. Even though our software is built, deployed, and working, we still have a lot of work to do to continue iterating and solving our clients' technology problems. Awesome. Work never ends. This is another of the NFTs. I quite liked it. It's got a little Shiba Inu in the corner. There's an alien coming out of him. It's, it just looks unique. It looks different. Like most of the other NFTs we see, some of these like little room-based ones, they don't look like they have much work. But this one, they put little nuances in it. Like look at the cracks on the floor or the reflection in the mirror or the cracks on the wall. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? All right. So once you get the scientists, right, the man scientists are the um, business to consumer. They already have a business to business NFT out and the floor price is not tiny, right? We'll have a look at that. Mad scientists will earn sci, I suppose it's science, science over time, which can be sold to laboratory holders for the following. Annually, each instance of Community 3 will burn a small amount of our sci, which is awesome, right? A little buy and burn tokenomics going on there. Uh, each future customer onboarded will burn a small portion of Psy. We don't know how this is going to work. It might be like a buy out of market, give it to us, and then burn, totally burn. Um, future features of our Community 3 2 will require burning of science as part of their usage on a monthly basis. This is what I'm interested in, right? Every time someone has to use their product, every month they 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 have to accumulate a small amount of Psy. And that slowly brings the price up because they s- keep sucking out the circulating supply out of the... Uh, this keeps sucking out from the circulating supply. The question is, these 10% of the tokens being given to uh, to the NFT holders, is that going to have a higher or lower demand than the actual usage of the monthly basis of these um, tools that they're going to be offering people? That's the question, right? Everything is supply and demand. How much is coming into circulating supply and how much is going out of circulating supply? Other customers utilizing uh, Community 3 will need science for other uh, services like animation, dashboard access, whitelist software, etc. Purpose is to create deflationary pressure on the token as we utilize it. Uh, now, I'm not a big fan of this because if their main aim is to create a deflationary token, then no, your main aim should be to create a great product. If you have a great product, the deflation aspect will come by itself. A mad scientist will generate a dividend of Psy if staked. Awesome. Um, and that's how the uh, circulating supply is going to be increasing, right? The mad scientists will facilitate transactions and new features with our customers, whether they, they use laboratories or not. Now, we already know you're going to get 10% of the mad scientists. You get access to future software uh, features uh, targeting other users. You get whitelist priority uh, with all their partners and additional staking rewards as released. Nothing really significant here. The only thing is about the 10% side token allocation. Um, and uh, how do you actually get whitelist to get onto this site allocation? You can start doing some of, you can start using their own product, which is they use some quests here. Basically, you go there, you follow them on Twitter, do the, some Discord invites um, through this little link at the bottom. And then basically, you get some potions and then use those potions, you turn into a whitelist, and then you'll be able to mint one of their NFTs. I had a look at their um, business to business NFTs and look at the floor price. The floor price is 10050 uh, 1,050 Solana. That's about $105,000, right? And there's not many listed at all. So I think this is uh, what people have to buy if they want to employ their services. Not as an individual user, but as a business. That's it. So about $100,000 if you need to, if you need to uh, use their business or use their products. For me, this is a yay because um, I'm very much looking forward to this business model. 
I want to see what the science is like. I want to see um, how the whitelist goes. If it gets too high, I might not actually choose to enter because then that's way too much. So many people, so many insiders. I want a good small, uh, a small community allocation as well. But definitely, this is a yes for me. I'm going to keep uh, my eye out on this. If you like him as well, leave a comment down below. Uh, that's it for now. I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you very much. Remember, if you like more comment, if you want more content, like, subscribe for me. That's it for now. Ciao.